Hello everybody, you're watching Pazzo Gaming, I'm Bloody Iron and today we're bringing you Income Wars. That's the spotlight that I'm showing today and it's a custom map for StarCraft 2, also known as an arcade map. And uh, I'll go through what this game is all, or what this map is all about whenever it finishes loading. Okay. So in Income Wars, it's a uh, team-based game, uh, three people on each side, or up to three people on each side. And you'll see at the beginning, I get a single unit to control called a chooser. And I select what units I want to spawn. You move your chooser, which is this uh, squiggly like glob, into the box of uh, so the box right beside the unit that you want to spawn here. And you'll notice that there's three differently colored numbers. Uh, the 20 here, the blue, corresponds to the minerals that it costs per unit. Uh, the green, one, corresponds to the number of gas it uses. And the plus four corresponds to the income you gain for each unit that you spawn. I'm going to go for that one this time. Uh, and so when you select these units, they spawn at your base here. And then they move forward just like that, and then face the opponent's equivalent units. So, this game is continually iterative. I'm going to switch to Marauders. And the general premise is to try and spawn units that counter the units that the opponents are sending at you, so that you can destroy their first building, the bunker, and then eventually the final objective, which you can't see just yet, is a cannon. Looks a lot like an upgraded command center, and that's the final objective. So, if you want to guard your buildings while well, at the same destroying theirs. Now, the interest that you gain in the game is compounding, so naturally, as you spawn more units, you'll be able to get more income next spawn. And the period is 30 seconds that we see at the top here. Now, every 30 seconds, you get your income, and then you get your gas refreshed. Gas effectively is a mechanism in which to limit the number of units that you can spawn. As your income grows, naturally you'll be able to spawn more and more units, and this is to prevent you from uh, spawning absurd amounts of units. Now, there are ways that you can, there is at least one way that you can increase your gas, uh, which is expensive right now. You can spend minerals to increase your gas limit, and uh, it's a optional uh, method for simply increasing the number of units that you can spawn per wave. Uh, it's going to be a little while before I can afford that, so I'm not going to bother with that right now. So I'm going to start focusing on what they have here. I'm spawning Marauders right now, which are okay counters to SCVs. They have a lot of SCVs, so they're generally kind of spamming us right now. I'm going to switch back to Marines simply because, oh no, no, I'm going to switch to Hellbats because Hellbats have effectively a frontal cone attack. Now the majority of the units that are in the left section up here, so all the units that you can spawn are along the top. And the left section is kind of the original units in the game. The middle section here are the heroes. And uh, here are some upgrades or kind of utility uh, things that you can summon. And then it goes to kind of like a higher tier uh, units. So as you move up in the uh, strength of the units, the ratio between the minerals you spend and the income you get reduces. So early on the ratio is quite good and later on it, 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 uh, the income growth slows down quite a bit. So Banshees can only attack ground and I, we don't have a way to attack air. Although the bunkers will destroy them. Uh, the bunker doesn't repair itself. I don't believe that uh, mules actually repair the bunker. I think they only come down and repair the cannons. I haven't tried because, in my opinion, the bunker isn't worth it. Now, at the beginning of the game, you know, about uh, 20 or 30 seconds in, this pops up, the talents, and you actually start with a point, and you can spend it in the different uh, talent trees here. So one of them increases uh, the number of units that spawn. The other one increases the damage spent or the damage done by all your units. In these later ones, I haven't really tried myself. Uh, increases damage reduction. Oh, well, I'm going to have to switch to Goliaths 
to counter their units here, just so I can stay in the game. Uh, improves damage reduction, damage to the hero. Well, these look like hero speeds, okay. So you'll be able to crawl down far from the sky. I haven't actually tried these later ones just yet. Able to slow down any units, that's a curious thing. Oh. Heavily motivate your units, okay. Maybe I'll try those another time, but not right now. I'm focusing on the bait, uh, the core elements of the game. Now we're losing a bunker here. The advantage of killing the bunker is that they gain 750 minerals. Early on, this is actually a fairly substantial advantage. Later on, it doesn't matter as much. Uh, I'm not going to be worried all that much because you can come back from situations where you lose your bunker, even though they are at an advantage. Unfortunately, banelings don't work very well in this mechanism because you can't control them in ways which normally they would have the advantage. Okay, so I'm going to switch to Dark Templars because they do a lot of damage. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm going to switch to High Templars. Oh, and so that's a nuke. So every player in the game gets a protective shield, one protective shield, and one nuke. The protective shield pulls up a uh, big dome that protects your units from any form of damage. This includes the nuke. So they are immune to all forms of damage until the shield goes away. And a nuke destroys any opponent unit, including heroes, where it lands. Getting some high Templars out. High Templars are particularly good at dealing with large amounts of enemies, ground or air. I'm not going to go through what all the units uh, do, simply because there's more units than I could reasonably go through in a single video. But you will see some examples of uh, how the units, how some of the units uh, can behave in this example, in this spotlight. So, the game is a is kind of a reverse tug of war, where you more push the enemy back, and depending on how coordinated your team is, you can definitely turn the game around fairly quickly. Um, and at the same time, if both players are doing, so both teams are doing a very good job of countering uh, each other, you can actually have fairly extended battles. So. That's leading up to uh, me cutting off the video here because I don't know how long this game is going to go for. Uh, a lot of the rest of the game is generally along the same principle. As you can see, we're moving up in the kind of uh, tiers, so to say, of uh, the units available. We're getting Colossus and Ultralisks and then Lurkers. You know, rather tough units, tougher than the units I was spawning earlier. Um, but it, it can go for quite a while. Uh, the heroes, you can only have one hero in play per player at any one time. So I can summon one, another uh, member of my team can summon one, and the third one can also summon one. I cannot summon another one until the first hero I summoned died. They're fairly expensive, as you can see here, and they do use a lot of gas, so they're generally not used until later in the game. Uh, they also don't, if you summon them fairly early, pardon me, fairly early on in the game, they actually have reduced health and shields from what you see here. That's more of a uh, balancing uh, function so that they don't come out when it's really infeasible to handle them. They're very strong, they're very worthwhile. Heroes are generally worth it, but uh, they are expensive, so you don't necessarily always want to have them on the battlefield. Uh, anyways, Income Wars is a very fun arcade map, which has a lot of replay value because there's so many different ways that your team can work together and synergize to counter your opponents, and even still, they can uh, work very effectively to counter you 
and trigger you into changing how your strategy is played out. Now, understandable, some might not necessarily like that you can't control these units, but due to the sheer magnitude of how many units there are here, do you really want to be controlling this many ghosts and their EMPs? It is not necessarily feasible to be able to control that many units and that many EMPs. The AI does a fairly good job of, uh, as you can see here, shooting out EMPs and using the abilities. They're not perfect, but as far as AI goes, they're pretty good. Anyways, I'm Bloody Iron. You've been watching Pazzo Gaming, and this has been Income Wars, the arcade map for StarCraft 2.